Hey everyone, it's Natasha. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to show you my most recent book haul. Most of these books are from Amazon, although a few of them I did purchase from Memoria Press. So let's just jump right in. The first one I have is the important book. And this one I did get from Memoria Press in a recent order. And I got Hide and Seek Fog from Memoria Press as well. And Follow the Dream, the story of Christopher Columbus. This is a hardback. Very nicely done book. And the rest I think are from Amazon. So I got the apple and the arrow. This is like a chapter book, but it's in a bigger book and it has lots of pictures. So this would be a good read aloud if your student is hesitant to read chapter books. Most of these books are, so the first three I showed you were from Memoria Press. The rest of them, with the exception of these, actually let's see what these so these are all sunlight books so let me go ahead and, and show you these I'm not doing a, a specific sunlight program I'm just uh, using sunlight to get book ideas and some of these are going to be read alouds and some of them are going to be readers so I've got the lumber camp library and what I did is I cross-referenced this these sunlight books and the beautiful on um, the good and the beautiful's book list to see if anything came up about them. So these are, were the ones that made the cut. Basically, I look at the good and the beautiful list and see you know, what it says about it, if it's on there, like if it has a bad word or you know, something of that sort, then I can make a determination if I wanna get it or not. Um, this is the donut fix and it includes info on starting a business. So Tristan isn't gifted or talented like his sister Janine, and he's always been okay with that because he can make a perfect chocolate chip cookie, and he lives in the greatest city in the world. But his life takes a turn for the worse when his parents decide to move to middle of nowhere Petersville, a town with one street and no restaurants. His suspicions about his new town are confirmed when he's tricked into believing the local general store has life-changing chocolate cream donuts, when in fact the owner hasn't made them in years. And so begins the only thing that can make life in Petersville worth living, getting the recipe, making the donuts, and bringing them back to the town through his very own donut stand. But Tristan will soon discover that when starting a business, it helps to be both gifted and talented, and it's possible he's bitten off more than he can chew. A heartwarming read that recognizes the growing amount of child foodies. So I just thought this book looked really good. Then we've got uh, Mr. McBroom, or McBroom's Wonderful One Acre Farm. This is a short little book. I don't remember what grade this was for. I think it might have been in their grade three readers. Some of the, I got I looked at Sun, Sunlight's readers and Sunlight's read alouds, and I chose books from there. And the ones I purchased were all books my library does not have. I try not to purchase books that my library does have unless it's a favorite and that we wanna have over and over. So then I have Tornado. A tornado appears in the distance and Pete the farmhand gathers his family into the storm cellar. The storm rages outside, but Pete knows this is the perfect time to tell us stories about a dog, dog named Tornado. So if you have any dog lovers, it does have pictures, but they're black and white. An easy read. We've got A Sword in the Tree by Clyde Robert Bula. I noticed that Sunlight uses a lot of this author's books and my daughter already read a lot of their books uh, from Sunlight. The Children of Noisy Village. Welcome to Noisy Village. Go crayfishing in the summer at Knockin, dipping in the pot at Christmas time with Lisa and Carl, and join Britta and Anna, who know the best way to go about nutting for the new year. In this gently humorous tale, master storyteller Astrid Ling Lindgren takes us through a year in the lives and customs of six Swedish children living on a group of three farms in the countryside. So it sounded good. As you can see, this one is a bit harder than the other ones. 
B is for Betsy, first grade, can be a real circus. I think this would be a good read aloud for the younger age for first grade. Would probably be hard for a first grader to read. We've got 20 and 10. During the German occupation of France, 20 French children were brought to a refuge in the mountains. One day, a young man came to their school with a request. Could they take in and hide 10 Jewish refugee children? This one sounds great. I'm excited to read this one. Travels with my family. This one looked adorable. When you hear the word vacation, what do you think of? Beaches and warm water, nice hotels with swimming pools, giant water slides and amusement parks, and miniature golf, maybe even Disneyland? Me too, but not my parents. So every vacation, my little brother and I have to go with them to some wild, faraway destination where no one else ever goes. That's called off the beaten track. No tourist traps and no lineups. No wonder. Nobody wants to go there. <laughs> And I got 26 Fairmount Avenue. There are pictures. The light at Turn Rock. Will Ronnie have to spend Christmas stranded in a lighthouse? So this would be a good one to read before Christmas. Also, we did a five in a row study years ago on lighthouses and we visited a lighthouse in San Diego and it was so cool. So I have like a fondness for lighthouses now. Dolphin treasure, baby to the rescue. Nice easy read. Betsy and Tacy go over the big hill. Betsy, Tacy, and Tib can't wait to be 10. After all, getting two numbers in your age is the beginning of growing up. Exciting things are bound to happen, and they do. The girls fall in love with the King of Spain, perform in a school entertainment, and for the first time go all the way over the big hill to little Syria by themselves. There, Betsy, Tacy, and Tib make new friends and learn a thing or two. They learn that new Americans are sometimes the best Americans, and they learn that they themselves wouldn't want to be anything else. So this is an old book that was republished. Here's a Penny. Penny's real name isn't Penny at all, it's William, but long ago when mother and daddy first saw him in the hospital as a little bear, his hair looked just like a shiny copper penny. A grain of rice. When a humble farmer named Pong Lo asked for the hand, of the emperor's beautiful daughter, the emperor is enraged. Who ever heard of a peasant marrying a princess? This one I've chosen as a read aloud, all of the above. This one looks fantastic. The Kitchen Madonna. This is an old book that was republished as well. The Ordinary Princess. All across the kingdom, excitement is running high. A seventh princess, always the luckiest and most beautiful of all, has just been born to good King Hildebrand and Her Majesty Queen, Queen Rodahisha. Okay. Then I got a couple books that are on the Mensa Excellence and Reading list in the K-3 to list. And these three books my library does not have. So in order for my daughter to finish the list, uh, we needed these three books. So, and there's actually one more, but Amazon sold out of that one too. So my library doesn't have it, Amazon doesn't have it. So <laughs> I have to look for that one used, I guess. But this one is The Quilt Maker's Gift. Very vibrant pictures. How the Leopard Got His Claws. And Pepe the Lamplighter. Lighter. 
those all look really good. Then I got these two books. Well, this is a sunlight book also, but this one is not, but I have kind of a hot air balloon theme going on in my classroom. So I got these, um, let's see. On one September evening, Gregory releases a secret message into the sky, hoping someone somewhere will find it. Someone does far away and an unusual, exciting friendship is born. I think I'm going to make this our first read aloud of the year. And then we've got the noon balloon. This is the same author as the important book. And this is very, very pretty. And then I had mentioned, I don't typically get books my library has unless they are favorites. And I did pick up the Ada Twist Questionnaires picture book collection because my daughter just absolutely loves Ada Twist and so do I, to be honest. I think it is like the best show and I love Ada Twist. I love Iggy Peck. Um, I love Rosie Revere. I love them all and they're so cute and it's such a good show and I highly recommend it. Um, so we've got Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. Um, actually, my daughter doesn't know about her because she's not in the show. So we have not read this one, but that will be great, especially, especially around President's Day. That'll be fun to add in. We've got Iggy Peck, Architect. Iggy's just so adorable in the show. And we've got Rosie Revere, Engineer. And Rosie reminds me of my daughter, um, how she looks and how she acts. And she's always creating, and she just totally reminds me of my daughter. And... Ada Twist Scientist. And again, I highly, highly recommend the show and and the books, but they are fabulous. The show is amazing for teaching science to kids. And um, you'll never forget what a hypothesis is. You'll never forget the scientific method and all of that. So anyway, got that whole collection in this nice box because um, we had checked out some of these from the library, but my daughter just loves Ada Twist so much. So we got, we just, I went ahead and, and bought them. This is, was pretty expensive, but, um, worth it. These are such nice books and, um, I just, I love them. They're so cute. Okay. So I think that is all the books that I got recently. Um, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you love all things education.